<laughs> Hi, Dippers. <gasps> Okay, here we go. It is Sunday morning. <clears throat> we are starting to stack blocks for the um, second tier. Well, second floor of the main floor. Second floor of the main floor. Poden didn't even know it. Okay, so we got one rung or run one uh, round on yesterday. It might be a little loud because we're driving. But we got one round on yesterday and that round couldn't be uh, HV clipped to the round below it because there's concrete there now and you can't get to the, uh, can't get to the little plastic webbings. So the longest time that we had was actually strapping it to the block below and we wanted to get that done before um, we, got built up any higher and had wind and had it tear down and all that stuff so that took a while yesterday we were basically just on the bobcat and our man lift uh, man basket and uh, putting little strips of OSB that we'd already cut for previous blocking or not blocking but strapping and running it along the seam and putting a screw in above the seam and a, one below the seam and that holds the seam together so um yeah that's what we did yesterday so you can see the strapping maybe so there's the strapping that we have um tying that block on all the way around uh we got a lot of the wood bracing out of the uh, windows so that those are all clear I, I don't know what to think about the fox buck it's a little fragile and just getting the wood out in a couple of places because the concrete was pushing in on it and because it was probably too tight anyway. It's nothing a little spray foam can't fix. <laughs> it, it tore out a, a few of places. Right, um, go check it out. <clears throat> one is like right here. You can see just knocking the two by four out, it snagged the, the foam and on both sides just popped that out. So that'll get spray foam, it'll get sanded, it'll get the probably Prosico um, waterproofing around it. So it'll be fine by the time we get all done, but it's just something that um, is a little troubling, I guess, on how fragile that stuff is. We also would definitely do a few things different we don't have very many windows left but um, the windows is what gave us most of the problem on the pour uh so yeah we are nine foot four to the second to the top block that's pretty much what the basement was when we poured it come on zoom up there camera and um yeah, that's where the first pour went to, which gave us enough room above uh, all of our windows that we could get our lentils poured in that top, in the first pour. And then the second pour will be a smaller pour. Also, all of the blocks will be cut on the angle to get us the roof line and all of that. But it was the windows that gave us the problems. And here's, you know, one example. So here was a uh, place where we had just this little bitty short block and I probably should have caught it. The fact that this was just a tiny bitty piece of a block. We have a fox here. So there's a web that goes through there that holds this piece to the outside. But then back here, there's nothing. And so the concrete pushed this and just rotated that block because we didn't have at least two of those webs to make sure that it had, um, you know, a good support. What we should have done is strapped across there. Also, here's a place where this pushed away from the wall, um, in part because that twisted, but we had a strap here. Going from here, 
um, horizontally or perpendicular to the seam what we should have done around the entire window is put a strap from here over to at least one fox back if not two fox back and just strapped the entire window because the only place we had blowouts were around the windows and it also would have kept i mean this one's pretty good right so this this seam all the way up is really straight really nice um this one because that block tipped i think and because we didn't have it strapped good enough i don't know whether this is bowed out or if it is how far it looks like it is but i got to get a straight edge so that's going to get you know that's going to lead us to more work as we sand that down and, and figure out where um, you know where it needs to be to get the windows in it'll all trim out and you'll never see it and it'll be fine but it's just more work than if we would have strapped it so again we would take and strap vertically like this all the way around the windows tie every one of these bucks back to the wall and then we wouldn't have had that that's our blowout that we had this time so what happened is the last fox um the last plastic bracing which is indicated by the fox uh, block lettering on the the foam so the last fox bracing was right here and we actually cut it off inside of here to get the fox buck in well that meant that this piece right here was supported all the way back to this fox block fox bracing all the way out to here a full eight inches of pressure coming causing this thing to open up like a door and we did not have bracing all the way around it we didn't have bracing on every one of these blocks and so what happened was when we got pressure in there it opened up like a door and dumped all the concrete on the floor so <clears throat> not that big of a deal but during the middle of the pour now we're scrambling for strapping we're shoveling uh concrete back into five gallon buckets and just handed it up and put it straight back into the top of the wall so again we didn't lose any concrete but it was just a lot more stressful than it needed to be had we just strapped around the windows you know all the way around like that uh i guess that's our biggest problem that we had and our biggest thing that we learned from last time or from this time i should say now the corner that we were worried about yeah we overdid it I, I won't say we overdid it we did it well enough because <laughs> it didn't have it didn't move at all um so here's the inside corner for th this one which would be the one that would want to separate we put three quarter inch sub flooring cut on an angle screwed together and then on top of that we have pencil rod and they had clamps that would hold this together this goes through the wall to the outside so that even if this tried to push this way it's actually pulling on the outside of the wall which is trying to push that way so there was no way that this thing was going to open up we did that in several places pencil rod pencil rod and then we also yikes I'm stepping on rebar we also did it to the um, windows so that this would not try to push you that way. Yeah. And so on the outside, we did the same thing. We have strips of subflooring, and then there's, there's the uh, pencil rod, and they had a compression type fitting that you slide over, you twist it down, and it has little wedges that bite into that, and that holds the, that holds the, uh, that, uh, clamp holds onto the pencil rod you put one on the inside one on the outside and it can't separate on you we did that to every window or opening that was near a corner so we were fairly certain that the walls weren't going anywhere because we had two by fours in here so we were fairly certain these weren't going to move that way but if you put pressure here for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction so for every force here there's going to be a force over here and there wasn't enough wall to stop that force from actually just moving the wall because this isn't tied to the two by fours those aren't tied over to there uh, so that's why by putting in 
the pencil rod with clamps on it. Now, as it tries to push this this way, it pulls on the pencil rod and the pencil rod pulls this this way. So now when the concrete presses that way, the pencil rod pushes that way, it equals out and you have, you know, a nice straight wall instead of something that pushes out on you. Here's the other corner, the other 15 degree corner. Again, we strapped it really well. Now this one is the inside of it, and so it would have tried to push like this as the concrete filled up. It would try to peel that thing open like this. So the only thing we had to do was stop that action. And we did that by taking this piece that's screwed onto multiple Fox block um, webbings, and we ran it all the way into the corner. And so now, as this tries to push this way, it's impeded because this one sits on top of it. It's impeded from going this way by being underneath. This is underneath that lip. And so it can't move this way without shearing all of these screws that we have through here. This would still push. So we put this two by four on there, 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 there. That keeps this from trying to push this way. So that wasn't going anywhere and it didn't. And then on the outside, we also had pencil rod from here all the way to the outside corner and then from our door opening even though this is quite a long wall <clears throat> we went ahead and put pencil rod in here um, so that we would have something that would keep that outside portion from trying to open up out there and then we put three quarter inch subflooring there screwed it in with the pencil rod it didn't go anywhere that one worked so we definitely learned from last, excuse me, learned from last time, but we also learned new things this time. So if you're using the Fox blocking, once you get it where you want it, it's straight, plumb, square, uh, strap all the way around it to your wall uh, before you pour, and it won't move on you during your pour. So that's what we should have done. Live and learn. Anything else? Okay, we're gonna stack some blocks. Um, try to get another row on. And uh, yeah. So, oh, one exciting news. One exciting news, yes. This is my office or future office right here. This little bump out. That wall right there, the top of it actually gets cut down to the correct level and that's the first wall that is at height or we don't have to stack any more blocks on now on this side we still have like four inches we we got four inch extenders we're going to put four inch extenders on there because we need just a little bit more there but on the low side we're complete so yay first wall that's completely stacked